Recently, we saw Christopher Nolan's new movie, Oppenheimer, one of the year's most highly anticipated films. You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves, and the world is not prepared. Went straight to the theater to see this, and then Barbie right afterwards. First, I saw Oppenheimer, and I honestly just thought this was an absolutely masterful yet terrifying experience that I haven't felt in a while in the movies. It's the first movie I've really felt like that this year, because a lot of the movies I really like from this year so far are more blockbustery kind of like fun movies but this is more like a just masterful movie about something that's really important christopher nolan my king he did it again i don't know how he just continues to do it the thing about this movie that i find so remarkable everything about it on paper sounds like something that would bore the shit out of me history that's it this is the most important thing that ever happened in the history of the world. Lots of talking can be really effective if it's done this way. But this movie, for three hours, his talkiest movie, it moves. It has such a rhythm and a pace to it. The editing and the cinematography and the performances. And yet you're getting this overwhelming amount of specificity in terms of the dialogue in terms of the storytelling it's all sinking in revving itself up to something that is as you said existentially terrifying which to me is more terrifying than something like insidious the red door there is a moment in this movie i guess some people might think is cheap but i found it unbelievably effective it's a historical recounting of an event, but it's also a biopic. And you're also seeing a lot of this from its subject's eyes and the way that he feels. No one, I feel like the last couple of movies has been a bit distant from humanity. He just wants to tell a story. And I love those movies. Dunkirk and Tenet, he does not. That's fine. I get it. Dunkirk, less so. Tenet, I understand. He's just been more concerned with the action because he's really good at it. And this is a movie where you get the whole thing. And I think it, in a lot of ways, could be his masterpiece. It is a fully realized vision that I really think sticks to landing. I think he's got six or seven that you could easily say, oh yeah, this is the best one he's got. Because he's got some pretty good ones. For me, like Christian said, I was not the biggest fan of Dunkirk and Tenet. And I feel like this really got back to a more human element. I know people like to criticize him regardless for not being as human with the mm -hmm. writing or this or that. But I feel like he does do that pretty well. People don't give him enough credit for things like that. This movie, I feel like handles that really well while also making sure it's telling the story of Oppenheimer from his perspective while also having some perspective shifts which are noted through different cinematography using the black and white and using the color kind of contrast and gives you that feel of what can I really take from this? What can mm -hmm. I believe? Really pulls you in and out with the non-linearness of it where it's jumping back from the court stuff back into, hey, this is before the bomb happened. How did the bomb happen? Kind of a thing. And it's really handled very well, I think, from that. And some people seem to think that after the second hour, it's like, oh, that's all I needed to see. But I really thought it was a very good turn in the third hour. I thought that stuff was really engaging. The part where he's giving a speech to all these people, mm -hmm. wave the American flags and stuff. That part's the best part in the movie, I thought I so think. too. I was utterly horrified. Disturbed to my core. And that's the point. And everything about that scene is just masterful from everybody, not just Nolan, you know, the people that worked mm -hmm. on the score the, of the, the scene, sound and, editing, yeah, the sound design. Some people seem to think the movie kind of peaks there and doesn't really have a discernible reason to exist for the next hour. But I think that stuff is really interesting too, because while Oppenheimer is dealing with the aftermath of what have I done, all these big crazy questions, you can see that he cares less about, you know, what's going to happen to him, what's going to happen in these proceedings, while everybody else is kind of more so cares about what's going to happen in this, what's going to happen to proceedings. Like Robert Downey Jr.'s character, he's very much just out for himself. And he's kind of like, hey, I'm going to survive because I'm this politician and I'm just going to do whatever it takes to do this. While Oppenheimer is over in the corner, just like, I hope that humanity still exists in a decade, you know, kind of a vibe. You can really feel it in Killian Murphy's acting and everything. You can see that dread on his face juxtaposed with everybody trying to get him for something and say like, oh, this was all his idea. This, the government had nothing to do with this going on and everything. And you're just grilling him with a kangaroo court. I thought that was really engaging. I thought it really brought a new level to the movie and the way it ends with the framing thing that they're kind of hinting at the entire movie and that's like the big bang 
that maybe you go in not expecting that to be the bang at the end, but mm -hmm. it's a big bang and it's one of those kind of things where you just sit there listening to the score during the credits and you're just like, movies are awesome and also yeah. it's like the world kind of sucks, but it's okay <laughs> because we have this thing called movies and we can go and see one and it can mess us up like this sometimes. Sure can. It's so rich that an hour in, I already knew I wanted to see it a second. It's just like a lot of talking, but like it's riveting. It's just, again, just like it's like this symphony of just tension just building up. It's so rich that I had so much to write about in my review, and I didn't even mention the Trinity test sequence itself, which is just a masterclass. Our work here will ensure a peace mankind has never seen. I, I like was pinned to the seat. I knew nobody was going to die, but like, I was still like, whoo. And he can do that. One of the criticisms of his work is the sound from Dark Knight Rises and on. Every so often there's a scene where I'm like, what the f are they saying? And I never got any of that here. So check. For years, people considered him to be like a cold filmmaker. I've never really felt that, but what I find funny is that Interstellar comes out and people are like, this is so saccharine. What about the previous complaints? He had his heart on his sleeve. What, what do you want? I don't really know, but I just want something. What do you want? This movie, I think, is just such a perfect combination of everything that he has been able to do up to this point I, again i don't think it's my favorite movie of his but like it's him at the peak of his powers and what he's able to do as a filmmaker the world will remember this day the acting in this movie is really first rate killian he's definitely the front runner for best actor so far a lot of this movie's on his shoulders, as well as Robert Downey Jr. He's really exceptional. Emily Blunt, it's a three-hour movie. Maybe you could have carved out an extra 10 minutes for Emily Blunt. But you know what? She gets a scene here. That was really good. What I liked about this movie is I've been hearing some comparisons to JFK. Oliver Stone's JFK. There's black and white. There's color. And then there's a lot of really famous people showing up for five minutes. I think Matt Damon's really good too. Really, I just think this movie is an achievement. This is one of those movies where even as I was watching it unfold, I was like, how was this written? Like, how did one man write this? You know what? It's based on a book that was written by two people. No one. One man. How could you possibly know that? We both gave this a 10 out of 10. This is personally my favorite film of the year so far. The year is young. I highly recommend go seeing this movie. It checks off all the boxes. I think all the production values are first rate. I think it's really well written and directed. And it's just a movie that reminds you of how great movies are. Like even after I saw it and we were talking about it on the drive home, I was just like, moving in my seat just talking about how fascinating I find all its subjects. I mean, it's three hours. You wouldn't expect any less. It's a really rich text that haunts you long after you see it. I feel like I haven't even done it justice here. You just, you kind of have to see it. It's an experience and it's an unforgettable one. It's three hours of just pure existential dread where you just feel like, damn, this really happened and fuck. This is a national emergency. If you checked it out, let us know what you thought. If you liked the video, like the discussion, give this a like, subscribe. If you are interested in more of these. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero.